people would like to introduce our speaker today, Dr. Nervici. She got her PhD in crystallography and biophysics at the University of Madras. And currently, she's a postdoctoral fellow in the Institute of Structural Biology, Drug Development, and Discovery and Development <laughs> in the Department of Medicinal Chemistry. And she'll be leading today's discussion on molecular docking. And this is something that's near and dear to my heart because um, when I was um, doing my PhD, I also did molecular docking and crystallography. So, um, thank you for coming today and speaking with all of us. And um, we feel that this will be a very interesting and interactive um, experience. So, um, feel free to ask questions. Something that is something that you can take with you definitely after the um, at the end of this workshop. So. Thank you, Delia, for the uh, sweet introduction, and thank you all for coming in here. And this talk is going to be completely informal, so you can stop me anywhere if you have any questions, because I'm going to walk you through a test case. So as I keep doing the steps, I want you to stop by in case you have any questions, you can stop by and ask me what it is. And also, uh, I have an uh, exercise for you. I think everyone should have got a handout, so uh, we'll do that in addition. And this is just for the beginner. If people are expertise already, I would really be uh, glad if you could help someone who are uh, like beginners. Okay, and let's start. So today the main aim is to study the protein ligand interaction through molecular docking and using only open source tools. That is, we are not going to buy any softwares. I know like a lot of molecular modeling packages when we do high end computational screening, we tend to go and buy softwares which are licensed, which is like thousands of dollars. But now, where there are a lot of students who really need it first to learn the basics and they want to use it in their uh, projects or uh, for their research work. So this is one of the um, major aim of the talk where I wanted to make sure like we use everything open source so people can easily access when you are a student or you are in academia. Because these software is like a uh, few of them are not open source if you are in the industry. So that is a different licensing. So today we are going to see like uh, what is molecular docking and why is it really uh, needed and then how are we going to do a molecular docking project and I'll walk you through the case studies and also you will have an exercise to work on. First, what is molecular docking? Any idea? Anyone wants to give me anything? Want to define? Yeah. Sure. Um, it's fitting a protein in an active site in the proper configuration or something of the sort. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so in a way, it's right. I would say so. Basically, what we do is like the whole of biology stands on from the fact like where we have the sequence information and then we move on to the structural information and then once you have your sequence and structure what is that you want to know you want to know how the molecules interact within them or with other molecules so once we keep on getting new sequences in our genome what happens is we want to know how the interaction of the molecules and that's where docking comes into play for example, we have an enzyme and a ligand. And the major thing that we wanted to know is how do they interact and they position themselves. Say, for example, this ligand over here, I have oriented in this way. But once you apply a molecular docking procedure, the molecule actually tries to find the appropriate site over the enzyme and the position. The, it takes into account of the place as he said, the active site or the allosteric sites, different sites, and also the interactions it could make with the receptor. So that is where molecular docking is. So in simple, we could see, say it as like, we are trying to find the best match between two molecules. So why is it molecular docking important or why do we really need it? As we all know, like in drug discovery process, to have a new drug, 
uh, recent studies have shown that approximately it takes longer than 10 years. Okay, it's more than a decade. So what happens is, and people invest so much for a, at least one simple drug to come into the market, we spend approximately 2.5 billion US dollars, which is a big investment. But how do you minimize this? I know it's not going to be like uh, so much of money that we could uh, reduce it, but with the latest technologies, you have many ways to decrease the amount that we spend on the initial search. That is where the drug discovery people came into a uh, procedure called virtual screening or high throughput. Your high throughput screening that we do experimentally is different and this is different. So this is virtual screening, which is like we are going to do or screen the entire database of molecules that we have. We have number of databases where we have whatever molecules being synthesized and it's been deposited. One such example is CST or PubChem or you have many other databases. Uh, in your handouts, I have actually given a link where you can actually look for all the databases and all the available uh, softwares and everything. So for now, I'll keep continuing with this. So what happens is when we have millions of uh, structures, we could actually uh, screen each molecule and bring down from thousands in, into a thousand molecules. So from millions, you come down to thousand and then further evaluation would lead to go to, down to select, like say I have 10 molecules at the end. So this 10 molecules, I can actually go in the experimental level where I can go for the regular experiments. So this is mode of time constraint, like you are reducing your time and it is cost effective and it is more efficient too. So that's the reason we wanted to do molecular docking and we are here to learn the basics of molecular docking. So in the simple uh, way in which molecular docking is carried out is, first is we should have an initial structure which is the uh, coordinates, uh, XYZ coordinates where your molecule is in space. So once you have the structure of the molecule, then we go for the structure preparation step and we take you to the screening step and then the evaluation. So first, going for the structure determination. So once you have the structure determined, if you have your protein and your ligand as like X-ray or NMR, it's fine. What happens when we don't have the structure of the molecule? Then we go for homology modeling. So we use all available techniques to identify initially a structure, a template model. So for both a receptor and a ligand. Once you have your receptor and the ligand, we go for the preparation step, where we have to prepare our protein molecule computationally to go for docking. Because the biological molecule, the coordinates, whatever you have, computer has to understand how it has to treat the receptor. So we go for the receptor preparation as well as the ligand preparation. And once you have all your molecules ready, we then go on and give, set up the parameters. Parameters is like you're going to give approximately, if you know exactly where the molecule could bind, we can define it, okay? Whereas, what if we don't know where this particular ligand could bind, then you can give approximate parameters. So for it to search and find the exact space. So here, once the parameters are set, we go for the molecular docking. And once molecular docking is completed, you get number of poses for one single ligand. So you have to evaluate which is the best binding pose, which is the best molecular pose, which is interacting with that particular enzyme. So we are going to see all this in our test case. So then you will be able to understand much clearer. So before going on to our uh, exercise, I wanted to make sure. So in between the computational and uh, prediction step, there are different things that we need to uh, remember. One is the uh, when you set up your docking parameters and give molecular docking, there are two things which happens. First is the conformational search, which means for every molecule, there are number of uh, rotatable bonds. So it's going to have various conformational search methods. What we are doing here is simply we could do 
three different ways. One is rigid body locking, where you keep your receptor as rigid and your ligand as rigid and you just try to put and take it out. So you're not going to really move or do any orientational shifts or anything to your molecule. Okay. The next is flexible ligand docking, where you keep your receptor to be rigid, whereas the ligand molecule, say for example, I have it like this, I try to orient it and try to uh, translate it and try to put them in the right orientation and the pose, it could interact with the receptor. So this is the flexible ligand docking. And the next step is flexible ligand and flexible receptor. This is efficient, but it is time consuming and it is cost effective. So most, uh, when you go for like a lot of uh, automated screening and uh, when you have to screen like a huge database, initial steps people don't use this flexible ligand docking. They try to use a flexible ligand rigid receptor docking because that is like uh, pretty easy uh, and it's not uh, time consuming. And then, as I said, once you have all the poses generated, you don't know how you have to select the best pose out of your uh, complete run. Therefore, there are people who have come up with algorithms to score them, just like how uh, we get our grades and we score ourselves. The same way, we score our docked poses also. And we dock them, like we score them based on force field. Force field are nothing but the parameters that's been calculated for bonds, atoms, angles, and the uh, torsion angles. So all these parameters which have been uh, uh, calculated and it's been already developed as a force field. And then the empirical based one and the knowledge based one. So these are all uh, based on the uh, informations collected. And then the consensus scoring is you combine two different scoring functions. So it's like mix two different functions and calculate the rank. So these are the ways we evaluate. So now, now we know like, okay, we are going to do a molecular docking and all that. So how simple or how complex is a molecular docking step? There are major challenges in molecular docking. First simple thing is, say uh, for here, you could see this molecule. Let's say this is a drug-like molecule and we have. Uh, it has number of rotatable bonds, which means they could move around in space. For example, I'm taking this theta 1, saying this as one rotatable bond, this molecule has one rotatable bond. So initially what docking programs would do is most of them would try to move them in intervals of 10 degrees increment. So every 10 degrees there would be a rotation that could be given to a rotatable bond. So what happens for one single rotatable bond, we are going to have 36. So you have 36 different calculations. And now let's take theta 1 and theta yeah. Do you need to mark uh, the rotatable bonds or it, uh, the software would recommend? Software. Yeah. Uh, in case if we have something specific that we want to mention, then uh, say for example, I don't want a bond to move. I want that to be static. We could even mention that. Yeah. So, for example, we have theta 2, the second angle. So, now think of you have 36 plus again a 36. So, the number is going to keep on increasing for a molecule. For example, if it has 12 rotatable bonds, it's going to be 36 to the power of 12. Calculations that's going to go on at the background. You are not going to sit and do that. <laughs> In addition to all these calculations, we also have six different parameters in docking, which are the rotation and translation parameters. So now you know you have a molecule and these are by themselves rotatable based on the rotatable bonds. But you have your receptor. There needs to be a parameter which needs to take it to that place. So which is translate and then rotate in such a way it could fit into the active site. So these are six parameters. So three for rotation and three for translation. So whatever, uh, say for example, if my ligand has five rotatable bonds, so five plus six, it's going to be 11. 11 and the increment of 36. So it's going to be a huge calculation. 
So this is a major challenge in molecular docking. So what happens is when you go for like a pretty larger molecules, there are different other ways that we handle those molecules. So now, before we go on to our case study, I just want to make sure whether uh, everyone has the software installed, uh, both uh, Chimera and uh, Autodoc Vina in their laptops. So do you all have? Everyone has? Okay. Uh, just uh, to make sure that like, we have uh, things on the same path, uh, I would uh, request you to just create a directory called molecular docking in your desktop because that would be the current directory that we will work on. And uh, once you have the directory, I want you to locate the Autodoc Vina file in your system and copy those three executable files in that to this particular directory. So if you are using a uh, Mac, Wherever the path that you have installed Autodoc Vina, it will be inside the Win directory. And if you are installed in any Windows machine, then you have to go to the C drive and where you have program file A or program files x86, the scripts research institute inside that Vina would be there and there will be three files. Just copy those, copy those three files to the molecular docking directory that we have in the desktop. So it's done with everybody. So all of you have it in the current directory, your Vina executables. You're done? Okay. So now the other websites that we'll be using today would be the path game where we'll get our uh, small molecule or the ligand molecules and the protein data bank where we are going to get the coordinates of our receptor molecule. So this would be the simple uh, flowchart of what we are going to do in our open source tool. So we are going to use Chimera and build our ligand molecule and we are going to get our PDB file and we are going to process both our ligand and our protein. So which we say like receptor or protein molecule. So once they are prepared, we set up an Autodoc Vina run and we are going to analyze the recess. Okay. So now let's get on the exercise. Let's start. So now once you have all your files on the desktop, let's start just... So go to your windows and start Chimera or in Mac wherever you have your Chimera installed. Just open that up and if you are opening Chimera for the first time, you would not see this uh, panel over here. Okay, because this just keeps in memory like whatever you have worked on earlier just to make sure in case you lost something, you can just click on this and you will get it. Okay. And then in your browser, I want you to open the PubChem uh, database. <coughs> so uh, you can even find the links in case you can't um, do it in Google. You can just see the handout where you will have the links for PubChem. And just type in, okay, let me just put it here. So, so it looks something like this. <coughs> so first you're going to, Take 5-nitrofinolin and just click into this and there we are. Once you go in here, what we are going to do is, we are just going to copy this canonical smiles. So the smiles is nothing but an one-dimensional representation of organic molecules. The simple way of representing for the computer to understand. So we are copying that. And we come back to our Chimera window 
and if anybody couldn't follow just uh, raise your hand so i can stop for a while so i don't rush so, just yeah. i'm trying to follow uh, the hand of as well but uh, i don't want to do that you're listening oh that's you. different that's the exercise yeah. for you to do oh, later yeah. So what was the molecule that we need to find? Five nitrocumulin. So everyone has this, like all of you have this molecule. Okay, so we have this my string copy, and let's go to the camera window and go up for the icon tools. So go getting in there. We have tools structure editing and go for build structure so here you could see actually this window shows like various options you can even start building from atom by atom you can even start with a fragment and you can start with a smile string or a pubchem id so you can do like any ways like however you want your molecule to be built in case you have your molecule already uh, from some other database, you have their coordinates, you can just download and save them and you can call them, just open them in. For now, I'm just going to show you this method because I want you to know how you could build. So just paste the string that we copy from the PubChem database. So just paste that and I'm going to rename it to 5NQ just for 5 nitrocumulin and just click on apply and did you see what happened on your screen hope all of you had the molecule built everyone has the molecule ready okay so now let's close this window the smaller window that uh, we use for building a molecule so now once you have this molecule go back again to tools structure editing and minimize the structure so minimizing we are trying to optimize the structure so here i'm not going to change most part i'm just going to leave it as it is and just click minimize so the various um, icons you can even learn what all these means i'm not going to explain all of that now because it's going to be time consuming but i have attached the uh, tutorial part uh, in the handouts so you should be able to find in the data from the websites so just click on minimize and once you click on that you will find add hydrogens it's going to ask me to first add the hydrogen molecules if something is missing in okay and then it is asking me to choose the force field the charges so when i give the charges it's going to choose the force field being this is a small molecule i'm applying gas ligand charges and then click on and now the system is calculating the net charge for this particular molecule and it is zero so just click on ok and now over here you can see it's saying like finish 10 of 10 conjugate gradient minimization so it's done with the minimization I'm just giving the least number of uh, minimization steps but usually in our daily uh, work when we give we give more than 100,000 sometimes it depends on the molecule and the project that you're working on for example the complexity of the system so now we have this molecule completely uh, minimized so we are going to save this molecule so save mol2 just go to the uh, directory I told you like we are creating and working directory called molecular docking in the desktop so just uh, go in there and you can save this molecule as 5 and Q so just we are done saving this everyone is done with this no have you saved the molecule again have you saved the 5 and Q 5 nitro file saved oh file saved okay. so just file save mol2 and this will be the path see users instructor so this is for this system so inside the molecular docking thing i'm just saving it as 5nq and click on save i already have the molecule saved so if i click on that it's going to ask me do you want to replace or overwrite i'm just saying yes for now so it's everyone has got this 
Okay. So no. I got an error message saying you must provide a file that contains either the name or number which will be changed to... So we have Balaji over here. He can help you around in case if you want anything for now. So once we start with the test case, I will be also there so we can figure out how things are going to be. <coughs> So, like, since Balaji is taking care of things, we'll move on to the next step. So, now you have your ligand molecule ready. We are going to go and get our protein that we need. So, as I said, the next database that we are using is our protein data bank. Just go into that and type in 3 ERB and you are going to get this. So, this is nothing but a human estrogen receptor. And whatever test cases I have chosen is just for the exercise over here and this has no relevance to me. <laughs> I am not working in any of these. So, download this file and so when you click on download files, there used to be like several options. We are going to just click on PDB format and save the file. Okay. Uh, I don't know which path it takes in this system. So I'm just opening that. So here it is. I'm just going to copy that and put it in the folder that we created. The molecular docking. So I have uh, copied it to the directory that we created. So now we have a protein molecule in our current directory. So just go to the chimera window again and click on open. So this will now directly take you to the uh, current uh, path that you have set because you already saved a molecule. So it's again going to take you to the default path for now the working path that we are. So just click on 3ERD.pdb and open. So now you can see the protein molecule loaded in. So we have a big system and this protein molecule oh you one. So this protein molecule if you see this is a dimer it has two chains. What we are going to do is these are identical Timers. So we are not going to use both the chains for our studies right now because they are similar. So we are just going to use only one chain. For that, let's go to select chain and select chain A. Okay. We need only chain A. So we don't want the rest of anything in here. So just go back again to select and there is an option called invert all models. Just click on that and you will select the rest of the molecules in the window and go to action, atoms or bonds, delete. So all that the rest of other stuff is gone. We don't have anything which will disturb us or which is not going to take more computational time. So you want us to delete the ligand as well? Yeah, we can load it because I didn't want to mess it. So now in this protein molecule, you could see all the amino acid residues are shown like uh, in cartoon forms, whereas there are some sticks which are like few amino acids where there are interacting residues and there is a ligand. For us to know which is a ligand, you don't know what is a ligand molecule in this particular protein. So what we are going to do is go to select and now go to residue. So residue selection has all the uh, different ways that you could select. One is through amino acid category, the various categories available and non-standard residues. So ligands are going to be in the non-standard residues. So for this particular molecule, DES is the ligand. So if you see here, so I'm going to just change the color of the molecule so for us to know which is the ligand and which is the protein. So just go to atom actions color and click uh, 
at the bottom, like uh, the third one from bottom, or the fourth one, I could say, by element. So now, if you see, the molecule that you selected is in gray, so which is your ligand molecule. Actually, we are not going to work with this particular ligand molecule because we have built our ligand molecule, we are going to dock that in. But for now, to differentiate, I have colored it. So now you have your protein chain. We have to do the next step is the protein preparation. So go for tools, surface or binding analysis and click on dock prep. And here it's going to ask the same whatever we saw earlier when we built our ligand. It's going to ask for adding hydrogen. So here, if you see this panel, everything is going on. At the bottom, you can, uh, if you keep an eye on this, you will know what progress is going on in every step. So we are adding hydrogens. And the default selection, whatever we had earlier, we are just leaving it in for the force the charges. And now, this is calculating the net charge for the system. And so once you have all this, it's going to ask whether you need to save the file. So first let's get and save it as 3ERD. Sorry, you're going a little too fast. If, if someone, you know, couldn't get to the, uh, you know, what you said, tools and whatever, then that person oh. lost. Like, oh, you can always stop me. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if it's just me or... or um, it's like every... How about others? Are you able to follow it or am I too fast? A switch too fast. It's too fast for you? Yes. Okay. Because sure, some things, like you'll say it, but then trying to see it on the screen because it's clear, I can't show it. I'm not sure which one to click. Sometimes. Oh, you're not able to see that? Yeah, yeah. Because the glare okay. is bad. Um, okay. Uh, you want me to do the complete protein part again? It was just the, the last part that, that was a bit where I wasn't quite sure what happened. Okay. So, uh, biology can help you if it's ju just one or two of you because I don't want to uh, make others also wait. But we can uh, spend time later on. Okay. We yes, could sit and we can work on if yeah. you have time. Can you just review the last part again? Yeah. The last part that you went through. Yeah. So, first, like I'm just closing this, I'm not saving the molecule. Just go for the tools and you have your surface of binding analysis and then you have your doc prep. Just click on that. So once you click on that, you will have a window asking which molecule you want to do doc prep. For now, we have only one molecule loaded. So it, you just have the ERD.pdp and just say OK. And if the right mol2 file, the last option is not clicked, you can just uh, make that mark on. Sorry, for some yeah. reason, for me, I have two molecules open. I have that size that we did at the beginning, and I have... Oh, you have two molecules? That's good. <laughs> okay, so I'm just, you know, I'm not seeing the same that I, I have here. It's brown, I guess. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, so you have two molecules. That is good, no problem. So just we are selecting this molecule, and uh, you're going to... Yeah, so this window actually allows you to work with multiple molecules. Okay, so I better just don't understand why, because we started at the, you know, what we started at the beginning, you don't have that, now nah, I do have it, so I don't know. I don't oh, we built that, that molecule, mm -hmm. uh, actually, when we deleted one chain. Okay, that's okay, it's okay, it's just okay. So now once you have this, just click on OK and the next thing is it's going to ask me whether you want the hydrogens to be added to your molecule and say yes, which is you're just leaving everything at the default and you're clicking just OK. And then assign charges, just click OK and once you put in your hydrogens, charges and everything, Chimera tends to calculate the net charge of the system. So here there is a chlorine which is with minus one charge and Ds which is a ligand of this particular protein. 
and it has no charge and histidine we didn't assign any charges for the protein so just click ok and once I click ok it automatically redirects you to save your file so now just type in 3 ERD and you can save this just click save so for now I have this molecule already so it's going to ask me again Yes, I'm clicking yes. Okay, so we have this. The next thing is we want to prepare our or set our docking parameters for our molecular docking to start. So just go in again to the tools, surface or binding analysis, and auto dock V now. Okay. So now, uh, everyone got this window? Like all of you all? Are you able to follow? Like, uh, sorry, I don't know, know her name. I'll, I'll, I'll be fine. Doesn't matter. I'm fine. Okay. So are you able to? You got this window? So we lost. Let's move to the next one. Just go for the output file location. Just browse. And now you'll see the path. The default path that we had, just type in a name that you could remember for your docking recess. So, just I'm typing 3ERD, which is a receptor, and 5NQ, the ligand, and I'm just going to underscore 5NQ ligand, and I'm just saying set output location. Just click on that. And now, here you could see the receptor which is 3ERD.pdb okay but the ligand is it the same ligand that we want to dock no right so we need our molecule that we built already so just go to file sir I think you already have the molecule in your window you don't have to do that <laughs> so just go to file open file nq.mol2 that's what we saved so just open that and did you see the new molecule in here if you click on like keep the pointer on the molecule you'll be able to see what the molecule is 5nq if we see this molecule it's in a different space it's not interacting with anything in this pro protein molecule so now we have to make the parameters ready so that we can start the docking step the next is going for the <coughs> just click on this one the receptor search volume options uh, resize search volume Please just click this you need to change the ligand yeah oh sorry now since like we loaded our ligand molecule just change it here you will see the smile c1 it's the 5 and q molecule so just click on that and here the center for now I have already tried this so I am just giving the value because we don't have enough time I want to give you a little time to work on the exercise so for now I am just typing in the value if we don't know we can actually move the uh, marker that appears here once I set this you will be able to see that marker So the center is 5, minus 1.5 and minus 3.5 I'm giving and I'm giving a box size of 10 cross 10 cross 10 which is the Armstrong's. So now if you click on this, that part you can see a green box. So the box actually says where my docking step is going to take place, where my uh, docking algorithm is going to search through. So if you see here, just you're going to make sure it's in this particular path since like if you see here I moved it so what would you expect the position to happen there should be some change right so if you see here earlier I gave the center to be 5 minus 1.5 and minus 3.5 but now since I moved the box let me just put it both the sides so you could actually see like what happens so if I try to move the box you can actually see the center keep moving but the box size is not moving because I am not keeping my arrow in the box whereas if you keep the arrow in the box and 
You try to move it. Okay. Yeah. So in one of the phase, you are trying to keep it, and so now can you see the box size is moving? We are changing it. So it depends on the system that we are going to work. Okay. For this particular system, I'm just keeping them as the values that I said five minus one point five. Minus three point five ten. Okay, so this is just to. Oops, I don't know. Did I close it? No. Yeah. So this box is to show where the active or the binding site could be for this particular protein. So since we already have a ligand bound there, we Kept that molecule to see whether this box actually fits in. So, can you see now the gray part? Actually, it is inside the box that we generated, just to make sure. So now we have set our box, which is the center, and the size of the box is being set. Go back to action, select, because we don't want the native or the ligand which was already in the crystal structure. So we are going to delete that. So first, go to select and go here to the label where we have residue, and this is a non-standard residue, right? So DES is the ligand label. So just click on. It could be different for different proteins. So it's not going to be the same uh, three-letter code for the ligand molecule because every ligand is going to have different three-letter codes. So just click on this DES. So now, if you see. This is selected. So once the molecule is selected, you will actually, sorry, Oops. yeah. So once the molecule is selected, you can actually see there is a green uh, circle uh, kind of a mark kind of thing which shows like the that particular part is selected. And then go to action, atoms or bonds, and delete. So you have them deleted and. I'm just making sure I don't want to have some other setting as like so just I mean keeping that constant and now you have the box set the next is the receptor options just click on the small window again the one that we are working on where we have the center and size receptor options so everything is set everything to be true I think if you're opening for the first time there will be an uh, the last one, ignore all non-standard residues, will be false. You can just click that to be true because we are not going to use a chlorine ion for our docking. And in case if you want to have a water molecule and all when we do like uh, higher docking steps, you can make this false. So that time the water will be included. And then the ligand options, just leave it default. Advanced, here. Uh, the maximum number of binding modes we are going to write now is 10 and the exhaustiveness of search is 8 which is the maximum. You can actually vary it from uh, 1, 2, 3. So it's going to be the exhaustiveness of the search like how long the search is going to be or how many iterations it's going to take in. And the minimum energy difference. So when it's going to be more difference than this then the confirmation or the post would not be written. So we have set it to be default, we are not changing anything and the most important thing is, so just click on all this again so the window minimizes so you are able to see the other, uh, uh, the last part. So just click on executable location, by default it will say like open web, web service, you can actually use web service but for now web service is going to be common and a lot of people are going to use it and if you submit something it can go in queue so for now what we are doing is we have autodoc vena installed in our systems so let's give the local path okay just click on local and browse and go to the path where you have your autodoc vena files so for uh, people who have uh, taken the load laptops you could see there is a Wiener folder in your desktop. You have to just copy those executables to your current directory. And the rest of the people, I am sure like you have already got them in the molecular docking directory. So just click on this Wiener.exe and 
click open so now we are all set now we have just before uh, clicking on uh, the docking run we have to just make sure everything is right we have the output location set we have a receptor we have the ligand set and the output is set and also the search volume everything is set so just click on ok and now you can see the job is running your molecular docking is going on and once the run is done you'll see a window popping up saying view dock which is oh see here I have already done the docking and I have all the poses for you to analyze so just so if you see here I'm just trying to zoom it zooming in and so whenever we had that the ligand uh, for this particular receptor so our molecule has come into that space and here in this window you could actually see you can align them based on the score just click on the icon score so you can have them aligned based on the score okay now you can evaluate so how do we evaluate each of these one is through the scores and the RMSD and the next is we will uh, check for the hydrogen bond interactions because the hydrogen bond interactions actually makes a stable complex before we do that I want to show you just click on movie and play so now you'll be able to see like how different orientations a simple molecule takes because this molecule actually has only one rotatable bond how could you know, know that if you see here the one that I have selected okay for now I'm just stopping the movie if you see here 1A which is which means it's just only one active rotatable bond okay so for this molecule we are going to calculate the hydrogen bond interactions let's click on H bonds and click on add count to entire receptor so and we are going to leave them at the default values and click ok and keep an eye on this toolbar again just to see like what happens to this molecule is there any interaction for this molecule even though the energy seems to look good let's see what happens with the hydrogen bonds so what it says it has zero hydrogen bonds so now we are able to see that this molecule even though it fits into the pocket of this particular protein what happens is it doesn't have any stronger interactions it doesn't make any stronger interactions with it so this is not the perfect ligand or the compound that needs to be screened for this particular receptor so once you have a huge database you should be able to differentiate so that's the reason I took a molecule which is actually not working for this receptor just to show what would be the case but now in your test case I have given you the molecule it's a different protein and a different ligand and when you click on and work on that you will be able to see the interactions okay so once there is an interaction you will be able to see once you click on that particular window where the hydrogen bonds are once you say ok you will be able to see like for example if this oxygen and some nitrogen is interacting there will be a line to show that there is an interaction and based on the interactions you can select the poses you can keep whatever poses you need and you can delete the rest of it whichever is not the worth saving you don't want to uh, waste your uh, space in the system too because you want the relevant poses you don't want everything in dump as so we are just going to save you can save that okay at the later part so this is all and now before I finish and before we start doing the exercise part I just want to make sure like we learned uh, at least I hope like I try to convince you that there is something important in molecular docking and how you could do a molecular docking and in, uh, if you need any other tutorials or if you want to go chat with any online forums you need any help so all these links would be of more helpful you can just click and uh, check on this and I would like to thank my uh, PI 
Umesh R. Desai because uh, he was the one uh, reason <laughs> I am here as a postdoc and uh, so thanks for his uh, support and also I would like to thank uh, Balaji Nagarajan for his uh, support, help and also my lovely husband he is. Thanks. <laughs> and um, our funding agency, the project that I'm working on, uh, I'm uh, thanking them. And the major part of thank goes, thanks goes to our library team because they are uh, the one who created the series and uh, they are keeping it going. And the help provided by Karen, Pavila and Terya, it's awesome. Thank you guys. Without your help, I don't think so I could have done anything of this sort today. And thank you all. I know I was a bit fast, but I can <laughs> hold on. I, I'll be here for like until 1.30 so we can sit together and uh, work on. Okay, but thank you for your participation and coming here. Thank you guys.